Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and I'm back again with another tutorial. And in this lesson, I've been given a challenge. Recently, Rampant Design Tools released a new product called Rampant Travel Style Mats. And a question has come up in both tutorials for Premiere and for Final Cut Pro X, and the question was very simple. Can you show how to do this same technique in Resolve with multiple clips? In previous tutorials, it's only been shown how to do it with two clips. I'm keen to buy this, but if I can't do it with more than two clips, I won't be making the purchase. Well, in this lesson, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get in and to set up multi-clip style mats inside of Resolve very quickly and very easily. All right, now before we get rolling, what I want to do is I want to head on over to Google Chrome and I want to head to the Rampant Travel Style Mats homepage and I want to bring to your attention just exactly what you're getting when you make this purchase. So $49, half price, already a huge bonus. The second thing I want to draw your attention to is the fact that you're getting 104 drag and drop mats. Now, 104 is quite a lot. But I do want to mention the fact that a lot of these mats can be combined in very cool and very unique ways to take that 104 count and double it, triple it, and potentially even quadruple it. So basically, you're just getting a, an absolute ton of elements for you to work with with this one purchase. So don't think of it as 104. Think of it as 104 plus so much more. Now, what I want to do in this lesson is we're going to use this travel style mat as an example. Now, this is a very common type of element that we would work with, and I'm going to show you the common way to work with it, but then what I want to do is I actually want to take this and break it down and show you how we're going to take three separate elements and add them into this travel mat so that we can have three separate images on the screen at the same time. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into DaVinci Resolve if you happen to be on Windows. And I have the clips that we're going to be working with here. These are just some great clips that come to us courtesy of Artbeats. And don't forget, you can always check out these clips plus thousands and thousands of others at artbeats.com. Now I'm just going to head to the media pool here. Here are the style mats that I have on my desktop. Now what's important to keep in mind is that we're not importing these as just regular clips. What we want to do is right click on them and we want to add them to the media pool as matte elements so that when they appear, you'll notice we have that little icon in the lower left hand corner representing that these are matte elements for us to work with inside of our timeline. All right. Let's head on over to the edit module. And what I want to do is I'm just going to grab one of these clips. Doesn't even matter which one. We'll just grab this one. Now, how we're normally accustomed to working with these elements is quite simple and quite straightforward inside of Resolve. What we're going to do is we're going to head to the color module. We're going to take the clip that has the or the node that has the clip on it. We're going to right click on it. We're going to add a mat to it. Now, the mat that I'm going to add is just the standard mat. None of the different parts. We're going to come to that mat and we're going to use the luminance for the alpha output. Once we've done that, we want to add a new alpha output so that this element is all set to go. You'll now see that if I come back to the edit module, we come back to the beginning and we hit play, this element now transitions on and it's all good to go. All right, now, this is all great and everything if we happen to be working with one element. But what happens when we want to take the sky shot and we have our flying over the valley shot and we have our ocean shot here and we want to add each one of those into the different compartments of this rampant travel style mat. Well this is where the different parts come into play. You'll see, I'll just double click on this part here. This element has been broken down into its three parts to make it easier for us to work with. But we do have to think a little bit ahead when working in Resolve specifically for the situation of we might want to reposition these shots inside of the different matte elements. So let me go ahead and show you how we're going to do this. We'll take our sky, we'll put that on the bottom. It really doesn't matter which element we put where because it's really once we attach the travel mats that's going to make a difference. Now, what we want to do at this point is we want to create new compound clips for each one of these shots that we have in our timeline. Because when we attach the mat to the clip, doesn't matter what you've done to the clip, that mat is being attached to that clip. 
So what we want to do is we want to have the ability to step into that clip once we've attached the mat to it and make basic position or potentially even scale adjustments to that clip and not have it impact the mat at all. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is right click, come to new compound clip. We'll just call this ocean shot. Okay. We'll call our next one valley shot. Why not? Okay, and we'll call the last one, appropriately enough, sky shot. Okay, and what we're now going to do is we're now going to add our rampant travel style mats elements to each one of these different layers. So, much like we had done before, we're going to head to the color module, and you'll see right now we have our topmost shot selected. So, let's just go with it in order top, middle, bottom. Okay, so I'm going to right click and actually before I do that, let me just hide it. Let's just make sure that element one is the top, which it looks like it is here. Perfect, it is. Okay, so let's come back here. Let's right click. Let's come down to add mat and we're going to add part one to this. Now again, much like we've done before, add an alpha output. We also want to make sure that we invert this. We use the luminance for the alpha output. There we go. Looking very nice. Let's now come back to our edit. There we go. Okay, exactly the same thing that we're going to do with video layer number two. Okay, let's right click, come down to add mat. We're going to add part two. Again, we're going to add an alpha output, just like such. Okay, and last but certainly not least, let's take our bottom most shot here. Again, right click, let's come to add mat. Let's go to part three. Okay. And it looks like we are now all set to go. Let's come back to the edit module here and you can now see there are our three shots. Now I did mention before that we might want to get in and make some adjustments. So how do we go about doing this? Well, let's use the topmost shot as the example. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to reposition this. I don't really care about seeing the coastline here. I want to take this. I want to shift the whole thing up just a little bit. So I see a little bit more of the ocean, a little bit more of the mountains. So what we're going to do is right click. We're going to open that shot in the timeline. We're now going to come in and simply adjust its position. So maybe this rock here is important for me to see right at the top of the shot here. So let me just position that more towards the top of the frame. So this way, when I come back to the timeline, you'll now see there's that rock element right there. Now, I'm just going to come down a little bit for when it establishes itself. There we go. And there's that rock element exactly where I had wanted it. Let's say for the valley shot, I want to see a little bit more of that skyline there. So let's take our skyline. Now, what's also important to keep in mind is that I can call up one of these mats side by side so that when I make the position adjustment here, let's just make the position adjustment, that I make sure that that is going to sit exactly where I want it to sit when I head back to my timeline. There we go. You'll see. Looking very nice. Now, as far as our sky shot goes, we definitely want that to be more so towards the actual sky and less so towards the clouds. There we go. So let's reposition this here. So what we now have is our rampant travel style mats working exactly the way that we want them to in our timeline.